Hello and welcome to my apartment in Buenos Aires, Argentina's preeminent city and among the world's most consequential in terms of culture and tourism. I'm 10 stories up looking down on Avenida Corrientes in the center of the city's theater district. It's a street famous for having once been filled with bars that gave birth to Argentina's signature dance, the tango. Buenos Aires is a city that doesn't sleep, and although I've had no trouble sleeping here, if one is so inclined, there's enough to keep you busy day and night. I'm here on Avenida Florida, just a few blocks from my apartment, which is historically Buenos Aires' most famous pedestrian shopping street. When you come to Buenos Aires, you really need to walk this street, uh, if for no other reason than to soak in the atmosphere of, shall we say, the European style elegance. Plus, it's just a fun urban stroll. Another reason to come here is to save yourself a boatload of money. Avenida Florida is one of the places you'll find money changers working the streets where you can change U.S. dollars for double the amount of pesos you get at an official exchange rate. It's called the dollar blue rate. It's an outgrowth of the Argentine government's policy of assigning its currency an artificially inflated value. So let's say you have a crisp $100 bill and that's what you want, by the way, for the very best exchange rate. And you walk up to a traditional money exchange window. They're going to, to give you this particular day 148 pesos to the dollar. But you can walk up to any of these guys or gals working the street here, and they're going to offer you 285 pesos to the dollar. That's the dollar blue rate, and Avenida Florida is an easy place to get it. So leave the credit card in your pocket. It's only going to peg to the official rate anyway, and spend with dollar blue pesos. There's every high-end brand you'd find in New York, Paris, or wherever. And with the additional richness of entering into beautifully colonial style appointed buildings, shopping emporiums that offer much more than they appear from the street. You might assume that many of this city's great historical buildings would date back to near its original founding in 1516. But the original settlement here was abandoned. And even after Buenos Aires was refounded in 1580, the city was more or less a backwater of the Spanish Empire for more than 200 years. And it wasn't until well after independence, namely from about 1885 to World War I, that a great migration occurred here, largely involving Italians that enabled Buenos Aires to become a great city. One of the things you gotta love about Buenos Aires is there's a neighborhood for every taste. And if Bohemian is your thing, then you'll love where I am now in La Boca. I'm here on the Caminito, a favorite pedestrian street in this colorful community and where tango artists perform and where there are Italian restaurants all around. This neighborhood with its colorful houses lies next to Buenos Aires' Old Harbor. It was settled by Italians, many of them from the city of Genoa. In fact, in 1882, after a long general strike, residents here claimed independence from Argentina and raised a Genoese flag. That didn't last long, but it tells you something about the radical politics for which the community became famous. Although much can be said about this community's Italian roots and its long tradition for counterculture, I think it would be remiss if we didn't point out that La Boca today is a place people come 
the party. starting place for 1580 Buenos Aires is this plaza, the Plaza de Mayo, which is of course home to the country's most emblematic building, the presidential palace known as Casa Rosada. The building opened in 1898. Its self-descriptive rose color was an attempt to mollify the country's two leading political parties at the time. One whose color was red, the other was white. Mix them together and you get rose, hence Casa Rosada. The fame of this building and the reason many foreign tourists come here to view it relates to vivid images from a particular era of 20th century Argentinian history. During the first presidency of Juan Perón and his more famous wife Eva or Evita, who was first lady from 1946 until her death in 1952. It was from the upper balcony here that Evita, with her husband as almost a glorified prop, commanded the attention of throngs of followers who filled this plaza to hear her speak and who hung on her every word. I'm inside a beautifully restored historic fort directly behind the Casa Rosada, which uh, serves as a presidential library for all of those who have served in that high office in Argentina. But clearly there's more interest around one president than any other, and that being Juan Perón. Just to give you an idea of how fact and mythology blend when you talk about the Perons, uh, you're looking at uh, one of the presidential cars. It's a 1955 Cadillac Coupe convertible, and there are people here in Argentina who affectionately refer to this automobile as the car of Juan and Evita, despite the fact that it didn't roll off the assembly line until four years after she died. After all these years, Eva Perón is still very much alive in the collective consciousness of Argentinians. And after her storybook life was ended abruptly by cancer at the age of 33, in death, she became legendary and uniquely mysterious. Shortly after she died, plans were begun to build a monument larger than the Statue of Liberty to display her exquisitely embalmed body. Think Lenin's tomb and you get the idea. But before it could be built, the military overthrew Juan Perón in 1955, and he was forced to flee the country before securing her body. The body had been on display in her former office, but when the military came to power, it disappeared and its whereabouts were unknown for 16 years. Then in 1971, the military found out that Evita was interred in Milan, Italy under a false name. Shortly thereafter, it was removed 
and brought to Spain, where Juan Perón, in exile, and his third wife, Isabel, kept the corpse in their dining room on a platform next to the table. You can't make this stuff up. In 1973, Perón came out of exile and returned to Argentina to become president for the third time. He died in office in 1974, and his wife Isabel, who was his vice president, became president. What did she do? She had Evita's body returned to Argentina and displayed it beside that of her dead husband, which gets us to where I am now. This is Recoleta Cemetery, where the elites of Argentine society had been buried for generations. The same elites who thumbed their noses at Eva Perón. And you know where I'm going with this. I'm going to Eva's tomb, which vastly eclipses in popularity anyone else who has ever been buried here. It should be noted that, especially in view of Evita's practically unmatched history of movement after death, there was great concern about the security of her hoped for final resting place. And hence, uh, special considerations were made in that tomb so that there's a, a trap door leading down to uh, the corpses of Evita's relatives, at least two that are buried there with her, and a second, deeper level where she is encased in concrete beneath yet another trap door. It's Sunday afternoon and Avenida Nuevo de Julio is alive with Argentinians engaged in one of their favorite pastimes, political expression. The avenue, with its iconic obelisk marking the symbolic center of the city, is one of the world's great urban thoroughfares. Plans for this grand thoroughfare began in 1888, but believe it or not, construction didn't finally start until 1935, and the main part of it wasn't finished until the 1960s. It's here at one end where you'll find a giant metal image of Evita peering down onto the city, and also where you'll find Teatro Colon, one of the world's finest opera houses, whose acoustics are said to be among the five best in the world. Buenos Aires is complicated, proud of its traditions, its architecture, its past accomplishments. There's also a certain melancholy. It's the melancholy of faded glory, of decades of political and economic disappointment. 
<risa> Recién vengo de una tallería. Y estuve haciendo una... ¿Cómo se dice? Eh, viendo si me dejaban, me invitaban. And yet, to know Buenos Aires is to admire it, as life plays on here with resilience, determination, elegance, and grace. <laughs>